us. <laughs> okay. Something, yeah. yeah. In fact, it's to present something we are coming from a national project hosted by the museum in France, National Museum, uh, who is dedicated to citizen science. And the idea, the, the name of the project is 65 millions of observers. And I will speak a little bit of analysis. Uh, I have to speak a little bit about the context. This one, data enemy, a lot of data. This is critical situation for laboratories. We need solution like sharing, optimization, yes. There is something around the loss of analysis skills. This is something described, for example, in 2K12 uh, in The Economist, where they say that people with the skills to analyze data are scarce and will be become scarcer. I don't know for you, but for me, this is something quite huge, and this is maybe something we can be afraid of. And I think we have to facilitate data analysis and to promote our skills transfer by training, for example, to promote access, more accessibility, more reproducibility and transparency. This is something important. This is also something related to more related uh, in data intensive, intensive science, like, for example, ecology is now, and you have to, to, to think about it. There is another part which is really important. It's so here we see a picture uh, just uh, above my computer where I work. So there is a dolphin because I love dolphin, marine biology, and like that. And there is also a quote from Albert Einstein who is saying that uh, most of the, sorry, most of the, the fundamental ideas of science are essentially simple and may as a rule be explained in a language comprehensible to everyone. And this is something quite interesting, I think. This is something important for me. So this means that we need to have exchange from one domain to another, from ICT to scientific domains, between also scientific domains. But we can go further and say that we need to have exchange between scientists and professionals who are using, for example, the, env the environment, like fishermen, farmers, and between scientists and citizens. And the point is here, we need citizen science, and I think citizen science is something we can really, uh, will, be, will be really something important for us. When I speak about citizen science, what we see, it's in the majority of the citizen science program, uh, we use citizen to collect data. And what is interesting in the 65 million of observatory project is that they want to f try something else and to focus on three other steps questioning, construction of a common language, and data analysis. So I didn't know if you see where I want to go, but there is a project will beginning uh, at uh, the end of this year, will be de dedicated to this task, promoting data analysis for uh, everyone. And I have proposed to make something around Galaxy, so if you are interested about it, if you have some questions, I'm interested to have feedback or questions or things. Just to, to mention that citizen science is really something important, even if we are working in proteomics and some omics science, I have to mention one interesting thing from a friend who, call, who is called Attila. Uh, if I speak about six million years of time, CPU time we can have somewhere, I don't know, and for free, I don't know if you are thinking about something, but in fact we can have it on games. And when we see that in games we can have a lot of people analyzing data, we can say, okay, we speak about gamification. No, no gamification. We speak about using existing games where there is a beautiful gameplay, there is a lot of uh, players, and we can put the data on it. And one first try of my friend who creates uh, massively multi-online science is to plug the Human Protein Atlas data on uh, the second MMO RPG uh, games, uh, world's biggest game in uh, these uh, things, so it's EVE Online, and they make classification of uh, picture of subcellular proteins and things like that, and first results are quite impressive. In the first weekend, they have had close to five millions of classification of the uh, images, and this is something with just beginning since one month, but I think it's quite innovative and interesting. So I can just finish by saying that if you think there is something to do or you, have, you are questioning about why galaxy with ecology, biodiversity, science, citizens, 
people a little bit strange, don't hesitate to, to come back to me and ask questions and things like that. Thank you very much. So, for the biodiversity, how have you been uh, getting people involved with the biodiversity angle? Excuse me, I didn't... Uh... Bio biodiversity? You, yeah. you see it there as one of the things you could use. You show the protein classification. Yeah. But I'm just wondering for this one, what, what, what's involved in the game? Yeah, in fact, yeah, it's a little bit... I didn't articulate the talk as a, in a good way. It's, it's, it's two different things, but it's really the game, if the game part is more to speak about innovative things, the project related to biodiversity and ecology is something quite different, even if we want to use something related to gamification, uh, it's another thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, all, thank everyone again.